Hello there, welcome to the June 2019 applied paper. Here we're looking at question 7. A small ball, P, of mass 0.8 kilograms is held at rest on a smooth horizontal table and is, and is attached to one end of a thin rope. The rope passes over a pulley that is fixed at the edge of the table. The other end of the rope is attached to another small ball, Q, of mass 0.6 kilograms that hangs freely below the pulley. Ball P is released from rest with the rope taut, with P a distance of 1.5 metres from the pulley, and with Q at a height of 0.4 metres above the horizontal floor. Ball Q descends, hits the floor, and does not rebound. The balls are modelled as particles, the rope as a light inextensible string, and the pulley as a small and smooth, probably a smooth and small. Using the model, show that the acceleration of Q as it falls is 4.2 metres per second squared. So, uh, let's work this out then. So it's going to be um, force downwards, which is going to be 0.6 G. There's going to be some tension going upwards. Um, and we're going to have acceleration. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be F equals MA. So F equals MA on Q and that's going to be 0.6 G minus T equals mass which is 0.6 times acceleration which is just A. We don't know what that is yet. Now we probably want to do the exact same thing for P. So another F equals MA equation. We're going to have the tension in the rope pulling it that way. The um, the weight of the force is not going to be included here because we're going to be resolving to the um, horizontal direction where 0.8g will be going this way but not really included in this question. So for this question it's just going to be t equals uh, 0.8a. So now that we've got these two equations here together let's add these equations together. So um, we're going to add in the columns so it's going to be 0.6g Minus t add t, that's going to cancel it out, and then add this column will be 1.4a. So now what we'll do is we'll divide by 1.4 onto the other side. So on your calculator then, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 times 9.8 divided by 1.4, and that gives us 21, oh, it's 4.2 exactly, lovely. So a equals 4.2. Lovely, good stuff. So there we are, a equals 4.2 metres per second. Let's now move on to part B. Find the total time, find the time taken by P to hit the pulley from the instant when P is released. Okay, so what's going to happen here is uh, the particle Q is going to drop 0.4 meters. Uh, particle P is going to move by 0.4 meters, and then it's going to have picked up some speed up to that point. From that point onwards, it's then going to just travel with constant speed until it hits the pulley. So what we have to do first is we have to, for particle P, do a bit of a suvat for the first 0.4 meters. So S equals 0.4. The initial speed is zero. The acceleration is 4.2. And what we want to work out is the final speed that it's traveling at and that it will continue to travel at until it hits the pulley. So we're trying to work out V here. So this is going to be V equals v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So therefore v squared is just going to equal, well, u squared is 0, so it's just going to be 2 times 0 0.4 times 4.2. And that's going to therefore equal v equals the square root of 2 times 0 0.4 times 4.2 and that's going to now equal 3.36 square rooted. I'm just going to leave it as 3.36 square rooted because I'm going to need it later on. Okay, so what's happened now is that we've got to this point here where P has picked up some speed from the from being pulled down by Q. But now that Q's hit the floor, there's not going to be any more tension in the string. The, the string is going to become loose, and then it's just going to carry on with the same speed until it hits the pulley system. It's still got 1.1 more meters to travel, so the next section of the suvat is 1.1 more meters to travel with a constant speed of the square root of 3.36, and we want to work out the time. 
Now, actually, probably not suvat here, but more like distance equals speed times time. So distance equals speed times time, because the speed is constant here, and you can use this formula when the speed is constant. So it's uh, 1.1 equals the square root of 3.36 times t. So divide by the t by divide by the square root of 3.36, and we're going to get. So let's do that all on the calculator. So then 1.1 divided by the square root of 3.36, and that gives us 0 0.6 basically, with a lot of zeros after it. So that's our value for t here. But hold on, we want to find the total time taken for P to hit the pulley system um, when P is released. So actually, that's the time from the from this point here to hit the pulley. But actually, we've got some time before it's picked up that initial speed. So we need to do one further calculation to find T on this um, section here. So we'll just use the easiest one, V equals U plus AT. So it's going to be the square root of 3.36 divided by, uh, well, a is 0, so it's going to be divided by just the, sorry, u is 0, so we're going to just divide by a, which is 4.2, which is going to be square root of 3.36 divided by, whoops, I forgot the square root, square root of 3.36 divided by 4.2, and that gives us a value of, 0.436 and now we're just going to add these two times together therefore the total time is going to be 0 0.600 add 0.436 and that's going to give us a total time of 1.04 and that's to three significant figures so there we are, that's the answer for part B. Moving on to part C, states one limitation of this model that can affect the accuracy of your answer to part A. Well, potentially the string might get in the way of the particle reaching the pulley system. Um, the rope might be light, the rope might weigh something. There might be friction on the pulley system, there might be friction on the ground. So this is just state one limitation that might make this uh, this um scenario more accurate. So there we are, that's the answer for question 7 with a total of 12 marks there. Let's now move on to question 8.